Hey everyone, you got Joe and Isaiah here from the Automator and uh, we were just working on this script. It was the the comparison and speed benchmarking between um, a 64-bit and 32-bit script. And I was telling Isaiah, hey, I have I have a you know a couple functions that I use at the beginning of my scripts, depending which one I wanted. And then I think both of us like at the same kind of time were like, why is that two separate functions? It should it should be one. <laughs> All right, one. Exactly. So let's make yeah, one function. Go ahead and share your screen here. Um, yeah, and, I mean, and it's so easy when you see them side by side. That's where you're like, well, duh. Um, yeah. It's really the same code twice with some minor changes. And this is the right, great thing exactly. about functions. Yeah, that's right. So basically this code here, you have a difference in uh, the pointer size, right? And yeah. you have a, a few other things. That, let me go ahead and show you. Let me annotate it so that we could... Whenever I'm working on something, especially when, when the code is very similar, then I just go ahead and take a look at the things that differ between them, and I just try to create a function out of it or you know any other kind of thing. So the first thing that I'm noticing is that the pointer size changes, and that is because um, if it is 4, it's 32 bit, 8 would be 64 bit. Uh, we are changing the executable here. That's one of the things that change. And the other thing might be, you know, the message box that you display right here. The, after that, everything else is basically the same thing, okay? So what I'm thinking about here, one of the things that we will have to change is these A script their variables. The reason for that is because these two pieces of code grab your current script and reloads it in the correct version. Right, but uh, I I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna try to pass uh, the two scripts that I wrote before, which are the season benchmark oh. and the parse benchmark. So I would like to change that to something that I could just define what it is. Okay. So basically, one of the things that we're gonna do is just grab the code. Oh, let me see. Hold on. My screen should be shared <laughs> during that. <laughs> so as the code is basically the same, I could just delete part of it, just stay with the one that I need. Um, let's just call this run with. That, that's going to be my function name. And one of the things that I want to do is what is the script path that I want to run. So that's the path or script path that I want to run and which version of AutoHotKey I want to run it with version. So let's make this uh, default to 32. And here, let's default this one to uh, a script there. So I just have that, those two here. Now, script path, which I know that is the same as a script there, I could just put it there. That's it, you know? So I don't have to, that's it. That is changed already. Now, what we're going to do is, this is the part where I decide whether it's 32-bit or not. So what I would do is just if version equals 32, right? And I don't care about anything. Shouldn't, shouldn't that be in quotes? Yes, it should. Uh, the thing is that I'm kind of like thinking about this part here, whether I need this part in here. So if uh, this is not about the script, so I don't care about that, and it is never going to be compiled because I'm actually passing. Yeah, for now. This, a, a, so, so right now I'm just passing a script path, so that's okay. Now, here... What I was grabbing is the location of the auto hotkey uh, installation of well, of, the active one you know, running. So, yeah, so and that's okay. I still want the installation for uh, the auto hotkey right now. And in any case, if the file does not exist, that would be right. The version now this part here changes to my version, whatever you pass. I think I will not need this whole thing. <coughs> right. I don't need, the, pass it. I don't I need the if statement any longer. 
right? So, so, so just to, to slow down a bit, because, you know, instead of saying, hey, if it's this, do that, we're just going to, we're going to be piping in exactly replacing what it, it is. Replacing right. it. So this so U32, no yeah. right, this U32 is going to show up right here. Right. And basically, if that file does not exist, that means if you pass something that is wrong, and right. I could just make a test, which is what I would do, if uh, version, uh, version, not equals uh, U32 um, and not equals version, not equals U64, then return an error. So I would say like you, it has to be one of those two, right? And exit after you show the message box. So return, uh, should not uh, invalid version or something like that. Okay, so that's one, that's one way that I could do, like just verify that you input the valid, what I consider valid. I just want to run 32 or 64 versions. Um, but in, if you do not put it here, if you do not put it correctly, then uh, you are still going to get an error because the, the file is not going to be found. So I could do the check or I could just simply not have the check. In the end, you're going to get an error and it's going to tell you what you put wrong. So I could keep it like that for now. In any case, I'm going to run the correct script location for, what is that, the, the name? No, I do not want the script name. What I want to, is this path right here. This is the one that I want. This is what I want to do. And I want to run it. Right, that's okay. Let me just give it again. That's it. I just run the correct version of Auto Hotkey with the the path that you just found. Right. So now that I have this function, let's just go ahead and uh, run it. I don't know. We'll change the name later. I could just include it. I think I have them right next to the original files, so it is included now. Oh, well, no, that's not where I want it, sorry. That's not what I want. What I want to do is to go ahead and here, prepare a return, and now we're gonna have uh, this script. I want to run it, so I'm gonna just copy its name. This is the path. That one should be run with Windows 32. And the other one, which is this one, let me copy this path. Um, and I'm gonna run it with 64 there. Now, before I actually go ahead and double check that, uh, let's just make sure that I'm getting the correct information with a break in here. Uh, when it tries to run, is it doing something? What is it doing? Let's see, hold on. Let's just stop right here. Oh. I think my, my hard drive is going to have a problem right now. Yeah. Can you pause in there? My hard drive just died. <laughs> okay, so right. yeah, in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to run both scripts with uh, the same function. I just put the path to both of them, and now I'm just going to specify the version of each of them, like Windows 32 for this one, and probably we have Windows uh, Unicode 64 for the other one. Now, in this case, before I actually uh, do much, I just want to verify that everything is being passed correctly. So I just, uh, I'm going to try to run the script and see. It tells me that, oh, you cannot have a script there as the default parameter. So what we're going to do is that if mm -hmm. not 
right? If, if it is not like that, then a script there. Right. Let me just remove this in the meantime. We don't need it for now. So you kind of pass it as a, as a default parameter right there. I forgot about that. But in any case, uh, you could just inside the script verify if it is empty. If it is empty, just set it up. Now we are going to have this is the path. This is our auto hotkey. It should find the correct location. So it says correct. So it is going to have the path to auto hotkey and the path that I passed to it. And that should run it with the correct version. And I think I did it the other way around. I think this one, which is the one from, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so this one that is Geeks Dude is U64 and this one is 32. That's the reason why I like to kind of like do those kind of things. So I just think about it. And now this should open both of the scripts, each in their own version, right? So this would open a new script, uh, but let me go ahead and here, instead of making an output debug, maybe I should make it a message box so that we could see it. And the same is going to be true for this guy. Instead of an output debug, let me make it a message box for now. And that's the average, right? Oh. Yeah. I just forgot to do that. Yeah, it's okay. So let's run it. And now this uh, should bring two message boxes. One of them is the CSUN timer, right? CJSON timer. The other one is the regex timer. So let me see, hold on. Yeah, this is the other one, right? So as you can see, now this function allows me to run different scripts with different versions of auto hotkey automatically. I just have to pass which version I want to run it with. Yeah, which is cool. However, that's not what I want. Okay. <laughs> right. What? I want one that I actually put in the script, not to launch a different script. When so you, you say you put in the script, that's what I mean by this. You're, you're putting that in one script to launch another script. All right, uh huh. But I you want, want to. I want my function in that script so it always launches in 64 bit or it always launches in 32 bit. All right, I get what you mean now. So the, the original information that you had is the one that whenever you run it, it checks for the current version. So let's go ahead and paste it right there. Now, I don't know why would you want it in a function then? Well, because then mm -hmm. I can have one function. I can just change. Oh, right. Okay. So that's what you meant. Okay. Right. That's not a problem. Yeah, and, and, and that's, I, I'm, you know, what you did was cool too, right? So I think that's good. Yeah. Just, but but in this case, it yeah. here, like, oh, <laughs> it, that's know. not what I meant. <laughs> exactly. So let me, let well, me go ahead. Because it's not the use case I use a lot, right? The right. other one I use, it comes up right. fairly frequent where. So you know, what the, I uh, would do, what I would do is uh, just to, just to kind of like, update this, it would be even a little bit quicker because uh, what I would do is grab this part, which is the one that decides what my um, pointer size is. So it, whether it is 64 or 32-bit. Uh, or and I would just make a, uh, hold on, a variable that says, um, let's go ahead and say version um, equals four. It's going to be 32, else 64, right? That already tells me what I need. Um, maybe let's just remove the U. I'm just going to grab this part here and change it to version. So I just have the version right there. It's going to be automatic for me. This part here, I could also change it to version. 
And our other thing would be the if statement. So the if statement, I just want to make sure that this in here. So if the script is not compiled, so I'm just dealing with a, um, then I will just check the pointer size is equal to four or, and let me see, the Unicode doesn't matter because I'm going to launch Unicode by default. So it doesn't matter what you do, it's going to launch um, Unicode by default. So by doing this, you already have a script automatically. It doesn't matter which version you have. It will check whether you are in 64-bit or 32-bit, and it would launch automatically the version that you need. But um, how do you determine? So how... how um, you don't want it to automatically determine this, the bitness, no, isn't it? That's what, that's right. You, okay. So you are going to actually tell it what bitness it is. Right. Right. Then in that case, we could just go ahead and use that as a variable, and that's it. Yeah, I was going to say. Right. Right. So you would just copy this. Up. But I don't want. The, right. I see. This is going to go into my library, mm -hmm. and I'm going to have a function that says run as, and then I put in 32 or 64. Well, that's what I thought this was doing because I just tell it what to run it. But in general, no, because that that calls it from another script. Okay, but in 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 it, for example, say say for example, this code right here, you copy it, you put it in here. Now Which you say that you would you will have you will want uh huh. So now you want a function in here that says run as. 64 bit. Is that what you mean? Correct. Or, or okay, so, right. So, this is what you want. Okay. Right. Now, our function, which could be included later on, our function would be run as, well, let's put, let's call it run with, because if you say run as, it's kind of like with, um, which user is running it. Uh, sorry, I'm running one that does not need to be there. I will not, I just need version here. I don't need it here. And this will only work if we are running a uh, an auto hotkey script. It will not run if the script is compiled. Is that okay? Um, I don't know why you set that, but... Okay, so what happens is that I have an if statement right here that says if the script is not compiled, right? So like, now... I'm saying I don't understand why you would why you'd restrain, constrain it for that. Uh, because if the script is compiled, are you going to run the script with another other hotkeys uh, executable? The, the, the script is already an exit file, yeah. so you cannot run it. Yeah, so that's the but reason why you would... But I would never be passing something to it anyway. It's compiled. Anyway, That's whatever. True. Yeah. No, no. The reason why I was asking is because I could just go ahead and remove that from there. Yeah, That's I the think point. you can remove it. No problem. Right. Anyway. Yep. So now you just pass the version. You just get the correct location for auto hotkey, and then you run it. And in this case, instead of this part, what I want to run is, mm, yeah, it's the same script that you're running. That's okay. Right. There we go. Yeah. So now it's okay. Now let's go ahead and test it. We copy this up. Go to CSON. We go ahead and uh, include it. And I would just say here, for example. And that way, it doesn't matter how many times I run the script, it's going to run in Windows, in AutoHotKey 64 bit. That's what I'm understanding that should happen. Now let's test it. So if I go ahead and run this, I should get a stop right here. My version is going to be 64. This should verify and that should be correct. And yeah, that's right. 
So now it is just running it, and now I should get the message boxes, even though I'm not I'm not in the um, so let's see. And you can copy those two lines, the include and that line, and change it to 32 and put that in the other one. Hold on. I think it is entering a loop because every time it starts, it goes ahead and reloads. And you know what? I need an if statement right here. Yeah, there it is. You see that? <laughs> it is going crazy there. I know what is going on. Um, if it is already in the bit that I need, then I don't need to gotcha. reopen it. Right. Uh, so let's just do this. If. Um, uh, that's why they had that if in there. Okay. Right. So if um, a pointer size. So let me see. Hold on. Uh, equals, so let me see. The pointer size is going to be whatever we need. Version is going to be, um, so let me see. We should, shouldn't we, we should use version to set is, a I, I have to actually kind of like um, equals 64 or 32, right? And then I'm going to say, uh, if that is equal to that, that would be four right. or yes. yeah. Yeah. eight. And now, hold on, these are numbers. It's okay. And now I would just say, this is one thing. I want to compare it to a pointer size. If a pointer size. I just want to. I understand where you're going. Yeah. Right. So if a pointer size equals then just return because you don't need to do anything else. Right. I don't need to do anything else. That's all. So if the pointer size is the same as four, now that depends on the version. So if right. the version is 64, it will bring eight. Now, if the four pointer size is the same as that, then don't do anything. I don't need you to do anything else. Now, let me try to rerun it because I think I have a single instance for us in here. Right. So now it will try to do it, and then Good catch on realizing what it was doing there. That would have taken me a while to <laughs> really what was going on. no, because I, I I know I was expecting something like that at the beginning, but um, I I kind of like didn't want to to deal with it, <laughs> but I have to figure out how I'm going to stop this guy now. <laughs> That's the thing. Um, to stop it, it is just. Hmm. Let me go oh, ahead. And... No, that's. A... I, I want to stop out of hotkey itself, probably. So let me go ahead and verify. Let me stop all the. Wait, hold on. This guy cannot be completed because it was already closed. Right, exactly. It's too fast. By the time that I want to kind of like close it, it's not going to. Right. Yeah, I guess. It's it. changing. So um, what I could do is just log out and <laughs> log in again. That's the only way for me to kind of like stop it. So if you can pause for a second, let me go ahead and do that. So we, he had to restart his computer to get that one script. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So uh, what we're doing right now is that uh, I'm just adding an if statement, in which I'm just checking for the pointer size. Uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm grabbing the version uh, variable that we have here, whatever we pass it to. If it is 64-bit, it would turn back an 8. If it is 32-bit, it will uh, give back at four, and I would change, I would compare that number to the pointer size. So if the pointer is already in the one that I'm expecting, then there's no point on doing anything down here, and it would just return. So that way, we'll not enter into the loop that we saw before, and I just want to kind of like double check on that. I run the script, and I check my pointer size is eight. So my version right now, if it's 64, it should also return an eight. And this should return right here. So it shouldn't rerun the script again because the pointer size is already in the location that I need it. We go out, and now our script is running without issues. So I know that now this is running fine. 
even though if I change, if I switch my version to 32-bit, let's just make sure that it is 32-bit right now so that we can really test it. Uh, let's see. Go. Uh, instead of 64-bit, I would just remove that and just to make it 32 just in case. And now, when I run my script, uh, do I have that function already? Yeah, so I have the break right there. If I go ahead and run it, so I'm running this with 32-bit. So right now, this should not go into the return. So I see that my pointer is different, right? So my pointer, that should not go to the return. It instead should reopen the script and let me break. Oh, well, I cannot break because after it's reloaded, I will not be able to follow it. But if I go ahead and hit that, hold on, what? Four, version 64, that shouldn't have happened. Why did it go to the return there? That makes absolutely no sense. So let's go ahead and make this a variable and verify that again. Let me check what happened there. And you're doing that just so you can see that value, right? Right, I just want to see. Okay, so in this case, it got eight and this is four. Uh -huh. So what happened there? Hold on. <laughs> oh my God, what? So that's what I was expecting. I was expecting it to jump the return, but it didn't. Let's try it again. Maybe because I didn't reload the script. Oh, look at that. Oh, because this should be in its own parenthesis. Right. That's right. Has to be the parenthesis there. So now, if it is in the parenthesis, yeah, it would jump. Because uh, the equal sign was actually referring to the whole thing, and that's not what I wanted. Right. So the parenthesis here is needed. Now we have the correct version comparison. If it is pointer four, it would just do that. Now, in this case, the script is going to reload. It's going to go. It is going to be okay this time. It's not going to go to the return. And for that reason, I should see two message boxes uh, popping up. Uh, in a few seconds, it's because it should go, yeah, there's one on them, and here's the other one. Now, this, these two message boxes are not running window, uh, um, out of hotkey 32 bit. They are running on out of hotkey 64 bit, and I could double check that by going to the task manager, and probably you will see that. Um, the auto hotkey script, I have a 32 bit here, 32 bit here, and the Unicode here, 64 bit. So all my other scripts are running 32 bits, right? Those are scripts that I have running. They're running in 32 bit, but the one that the script just launched is in 64 bit. That's the one that is running right now. And if I close it, it that will go away. So as you can see, it is actually honoring uh, the, yeah, the thing of, yeah, that it should just relaunch the script on a specific, uh, version. So, uh, what I notice here, I understand now what you were trying to do at the beginning was it, you want a function in which you force it to run in that particular version, not to do it automatically because the, the code that you have at the moment does it automatically. It just checks what the pointer is. And if it is not, whatever you need, it just goes ahead and launches the, the specific version. But with this, you will be able to run this with the version that you want at right. any point, right? So you just specify what you want, and it would just well, go ahead and right. And in the example I gave you, I have, and because I just put it in QAP, I have it, hey, launch it in 32 or launch it in 64, and I know which one to go get, but why not just have that in a function? Did I just yeah. change the number, right? Exactly. Then, you just change one number, um, and yeah, that's it. This thing is going to go ahead and fetch the correct version for you right there. <laughs> it's, it's a shame that's not built in auto hotkey also, just, you know, a thing that mm -hmm. you can tell it, the script, what control, what fitness you want. But anyway. Yeah. No, well, the, the main idea, I think the reason why they haven't done that is because they're going away from... Uh, certain things, like for example, all uh, version two scripts are gonna be Unicode, all of them. So there is no ANSI version anymore. 
And I'm not really sure if there will be uh, a point in the future, I don't know, many years from now, that people will stop using 32-bit versions of stuff. We stopped using 16-bit versions of apps a long time ago. Now, every single app, most of them are 32-bit or 64-bit. The 16-bit applications are gone. So right. probably that will happen to 32-bit at some point as well. So, Cool. Awesome, man. Well, thank okay, you. So, yeah. yeah, and I did, you know, the other one is cool as well, right, to be able to launch a script because, you, you know, me, I have it in my main script. I launch other scripts. So that one, I could yeah, use so, the one you're doing. Right. So this function right here, the this run with function, uh, the, the one that I created first, uh, you could inside your script call other scripts with a specific uh, fitness to them, which might be you know good for uh, in certain situations. But right. what you have right here is kind of like a more general approach that you can just slap this function into any script yeah. and you right. force it to run in a specific right. fitness. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Excellent. All right, thank you, man. Okay. Oh, and everyone, if you get confused, then you know, add in the comments and please like the video and subscribe. It'd be great. That's right. Uh, cheers. Bye. Hey, if you just watched that video and you felt it was a bit over your head, I would recommend reach out to us at joe at theautomator.com. And we offer consulting services where we will help educate you and work with you to level you up. To me, it's best ways that you can start learning auto hockey and make really significant jumps is having someone assess where you are and then kind of nudge you a little bit higher and higher um, and get your code worked on by someone who's been doing it for a long time.